Welcome to my review guide for my CEH V9 questions. Here we're dealing with questions 21 through 25. Alright, so what is data execution prevention and how does it differ from the UAC? UAC is user access control and that's going to be more of a you being able to access or save items to certain locations. Uh, this also, UAC, specifically is dealing with when you're logged in as an administrator, what type of uh, session token do you get? You get a user token if you don't need administrative privileges. When you need administrative privileges, you get a UAC prompt, and that is basically promoting your user token to an admin token, first of all. All right, next, data execution prevention actually helps prevent items from being executed where it's shown to be malicious. So again, user access controls is about being able to access certain areas and user session tokens, where DEP is more about uh, command execution prevention when it's uh, malware. So what are the different uh, sections for a three-way handshake? Understand the sections. Understand that when you start out, you have a initial sync packet. So the client will send a sync packet, the target server will send an acknowledgement packet, and then we, they are waiting for another ACK packet. Let me get a visual representation for this. Alright, here's an example. So, device A will send a sync. So, sync flag is set to 1, acknowledge is set to 0. To device B. Device B will receive that, and it will respond with a sync number one, and ACK number one. Once device B A gets that, it will now send a acknowledgement packet, an ACK sync packet. That way, that will create a secured session, and they will start communicating after those three items occur. A common question in networking is, what is the first packet sent in a three-way handshake? And that is a sync packet. All right. Different type of fingerprinting for OS. Understand that active is active. Passive is more passive. What I mean by that is active is like you're actively trying to do it. It will actively engage the operating system where passive will use like a sniffer, like Wireshark, to capture traffic, and you'd analyze that traffic to determine the, op uh, the operating system. Again, passive, you're not actively looking at the operating system, you're more gauging uh, the operating system from the uh, capturing packets. A passive fingerprint cannot be done remotely. It has to be done on the same wire. What tools would you use to analyze wireless traffic? Understand the different types of tools. Wireshark is a packet analysis tool, so typically you'd be using Wireshark. But, because it's wireless traffic, you might have to have an add-on component. AirSnort is for cracking encryption. AirCap is an add-in for Wireshark that helps with analyzing wireless traffic. So again, what tools would you use to analyze wireless network traffic? Probably in this case, Wireshark and AirCap. If they said the traffic was encrypted, AirSnort, Wireshark, and AirCap. Alright, last question. What does Whois do? Whois allows you to pull public information about domains and their contacts. Alright, so I'm just going to do a Google search for who is csn.edu. I have to make sure that I'm not a robot. So I can allow me to do a lookup at for csn.edu. First part is just the registry information, domain name I looked up. This is where it's registered. 
Here is the administrative contacts. Here is the technical contacts. Here they happen to be the same. This is when it was activated, last updated, and when it expires. Some domain providers provide more information, some provide less. A good example is some provide a block so that you cannot see the owners. You actually get a mask. Just kind of depends on what you want to pay for. Again, this is all public information. So, when you are looking at what does Whois do, it specifically will pull public information about a domain that you're searching. Alright, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you.